Um, okay, um, this is uh, not really a new topic as far as Redos goes. It's, it's an old attack. Um, the thing that I'm bringing to this that's sort of new is automation. So, um, and, and some benchmarking too. But what I mean by automation is with uh, NFA engines, you have to, to kill the performance, you actually have to craft a, an evil string. And um, normally that takes a little bit of craftiness. You have to understand the expression a little bit, know what would make it perform terribly. Um, that's the part I automated. And I have a tool that I released. And there will be a demo at the end with that. So that's just to know what to expect. Um, but I will go through regular expressions, how the dosing works, and all that first. Um, but before I start with that, um, I just want to give some shouts and some credit to some of the places that I hacked at and did my security research at. Um, that's where I primarily did most of it. So Heatsink Labs from Phoenix when I used to live there. And then. <laughs> And then uh, my new life in Manhattan, so uh, NYC Resistor and Hack Manhattan is where I did a lot of the later stuff. So I don't really go into depth on this kind of a slide, but the about me, I'm Eric. I'm not a security researcher. There's my email address. My blog is there that has a little bit more details um, about some of the other stuff with not just regex but some like low level assembly machine code stuff I talk about. I'm always talking about how assembly uh, language is too high level. And then my GitHub. And at the bottom, in smaller, just to fit the screen, is the specific uh, Perl script that is the tool that I'll be talking about later in demoing. And when I say not a security researcher, it's kind of a funny story. Um, I typically don't include like a company name or a uh, title or anything in my bio. So when you don't do that, if you notice, there's a lot of people that says security researcher after their name. Um, but I mean, I didn't put that because like I don't even really know what security research is. So I just like hack. So this first part, kind of the first third of the presentation, um, and I'll make this part really quick because there's a lot of hands, so I'll try to r race through this, but this is kind of the TLDR of regular expressions. There's, there's more to it, but like this is 90% of what you would ever use, and for somebody that didn't know regular expressions, like even learning half of this stuff, you could get, uh, get moving really, really quickly and be useful. Um, so like, like I said, I'm really going to race this because like, all the hands that went up, I didn't even expect that. Um, and you know what, like I'm almost not even going to explain uh, too much about re what regular expressions are. I mean it's a great way to search is the way I look at it. It's a kind of a programming language. It's non-Turing complete, which is um, being that it's kind of like a language, it's why you can have performance issues. Um, but it's like, uh, you know when you're doing file searches you can do like, you know, dot star, star dot, or a question mark for one character. It's kind of like that kind of a syntax but way more powerful. Um, so first I'll talk about quantifiers. Um, Say I was looking um, in a file or any kind of uh, data packet or anything. Um, if I wanted to find five or five, anywhere from five to fifteen X's, like the syntax of that that search looks a little bit like that. So X and then the amount from five to fifteen. Um, and then we have aliases for useful ranges that we use a lot. So if we wanted to say zero to one uh, of that. Of like the letter X, that's just a question mark after the X. Or a plus is something like, say, X plus would be one or more X's. Um, and I say one or more, um, I kind of say one to infinity here, but that's not completely true. There is a limit. Um, and then the, the star is not like a, a star when you're doing file searches, like the glob kind of format. Um, it means anywhere from zero to infinity. So it's, instead of one or more, it's like kind of like one or more, but also, the option for none at all is there as well. So, there's also character classes, so you can group a certain kind of character. Like I'm, I'm, I'm looking for like three fives and nines in, in my string, and I want to find five to eight of those kinds of characters. So, uh, because of that, a string like that could match. There's also negative space. You can set up a character class that is negated. So this right here, it, this uh, little caret is the negation, and this is the class that we're negating, the comma. So what this really means is uh, one or more not commas, like one or more characters that is not a comma. So this this string down here in red, this is the part of it that matches until we hit the comma. Somehow. Wow. I have no idea how that just happened. Uh, 
So give me a second here, man. <laughs> Technical issues. What's up? Oh, weird. It's doing that scaled mode. Does anybody know uh, OSX well enough to like get out of the scale mode? Hey, Joe. Uh, derp. No, no, no. That that worked. Cool. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> All right, back on track. Um, so some uh, aliases for character classes. Uh, you can do. Uh, I'll go in here. White space. Uh, numbers. Alphanumeric. Also underscore. Um, and then if you capitalize it, that's a negated character class of that. So you can say not white space or not numbers or not alphanumeric. And then you have a dot, which is kind of like the question mark in uh, globbing. So that's um, any character except for new lines, typically, unless not, because you can uh, modify that too. So we can also do kind of like an or um, statement. So if we're looking for uh, any of these three words in a string, we, you know, like good, bad, evil, um, this, this string down here, this non-evil sentence would match. The part that matches is the word evil. So it, it had one of those three in it. We can also group it as well. So if we did the good, bad, evil and, and grouped it with uh, parentheses, we can also say three or more of that. So any one of those words, we have bad, good, evil, bad. So any one of those three words, we had four of them and it matched all that. And that's that. We can also anchor. Um, so what that means is uh, for the caret, not in a caret class, but a caret uh, means we want to find the word anchor. In this case, this is our regular expression. But uh, it has to, the string has to start with um, the word anchor. So a, a, a string that would match is anchor is an anchor. But a string that would not match is boat is an anchor because it does have the word anchor, but the thing is, it doesn't start with that word. It starts with the word boat, um, and then we can do the same kind of thing with a, a end anchor. And the, the syntax or the sign for that is the dollar sign. So um, that's the regular expression. And a string that would match is anchor is an anchor because it ends with anchor. Um, this would not match. Anchor is a boat because it has the word anchor, but it doesn't end with the word anchor. If we want to search a string for a character that is actually a regular expression character, well, we can't just do that plain because it's going to be interpreted as a regular expression character. So we have to uh, what's called escape it with a backslash. So if we're looking for three to six dollar signs, we specifically have to say, you know, this is an escape. This is a dollar sign, not an end anchor. And this is the, like the last regex specific thing I'll, I'll go into because this is like kind of the boring stuff if you already know regex and I'll get into the dosing. Um, there's greediness, laziness, and there's also possessiveness. Um, but it, it's kind of, uh, it, it's a useful thing to know and actually kind of a source of confusion when things aren't matching the way you want. But a good example is kind of an HTML uh, example here because <laughs> regex is the best thing to parse HTML. I don't know if you guys have seen that Stack Overflow epic post. But, um, in this case I have uh, a script tag and then it says not really and we end the script and then we have some text and then we start another script tag and we end that and then more text. So if we had a regular expression where we were attempting to try to find just the first script tag um, and then, you know, everything in between it, uh, that would kind of, kind of work if we only had one script tag but because regex by default is greedy, it tries to capture everything. So um, the thing that it, it matches is starting from this first script, <laughs> wow, that's a whole presentation. Um, here we go. Starting from the uh, first script all the way to the, the last script, the second end script tag. Um, so if we wanted just the first uh, script pair, we can use that question mark modifier after a quantifier, which is the plus in this case, and it makes it go until the next thing we're looking for, not everything until the next one. So now Redos. Now it's all evil because it's red. I'm going to take a drink of my uh, caffeine here, real quick. Okay. Um, before we start attacking, there's there's more than just these two engines, but these are the the most common types of regular expression engines. Um, another, there's hybrids too, but um, there's a deterministic uh, engine and a non-deterministic engine. 
and uh, they have different kinds of uh, problems when it comes to performance. And usually when you uh, read up on Redos, um, NFAs are the engines most talked about, and the way to DOS it is through time. Uh, deterministic engines are a little bit different because timing-wise, it doesn't really even matter what string um, it's searching. It's kind of going to deterministically, time-wise, uh, find out if it matches or not. Uh, but you don't get that for free. Uh, the, the downside is it can take up a lot of memory to build the state table. But before, so again, if you were going to try to DOS uh, an expression, uh, you kind of want to know what kind of engine it's using because your strategies are going to be a little bit different. So you can actually do a bit of a recon to find that out because they don't actually, it'd be nice if they work exactly the same um, as far as the output that they, uh, that you get, but it, it doesn't completely. Like one uh, engine will, if you have a list of ORs, one of them will pick the first one, another engine will pick the longest one instead. Um, also laziness, the DFA doesn't support, and possessiveness is handled really weirdly for um, one of the engines. So we can test it uh, with like a proof of concept, the, the two different reps. I can show some of the different results um, and show what I mean when I'm saying that. So the longest alternation thing. The NFA, which is the, the first example here, and I'll zoom in. Um, the sample string, I'm echoing out, the string is AB, and the, the grep or the search that I'm doing is A or AB. And the match that we get is just A. So really what's happening is we're picking the first thing that we see that matches the string, and the first thing we see is just the A, and now we're done. We know it matches. We don't try to get any more than that. Where on the other hand, the DFA, uh, we do AB, it grabs the largest thing. It actually matches AB, the full AB. So there's actually a difference in what it actually matches. And laziness, this example is pretty straightforward just because like the DFA doesn't even support it. But um, we're, we're trying to, we have this search string of A, B, A, B, A. We're searching for A and then any amount of any character until the next A, which makes sense to why we get A, B, A. Um, but if we use a DFA, we're still trying to say the same thing, but that laziness, the, the question mark, doesn't work and we actually get A, B, A, B, A, B, A. Because it is an A and then any amount of anything until another A is how that's working. So it just keeps on going. B is any amount of anything, A is any amount of anything, and B is, you know, like that. Um, this one is really weird. Uh, with NFAs, when they find something that matches as it's going along, it, it holds on to it and doesn't want to give it back. It just keeps going. So in this case, we have uh, ABC as the search string for both. And our expression, it's a little bit more complicated, but just to break it down, we're looking for an A and then maybe a B, so zero or one Bs. And then we're looking for maybe a BC, zero or one BCs. In, in both of the expressions, that's, that's what we're looking for. So for one of them, we get AB, and another one, we get ABC. Um, so it's, it's weird why we get that when our whole search string is ABC, why we only get AB for one and ABC. But if we follow it with the NFA, we, we get our A and then the next thing is, uh, yeah, we get, we get our A and then there's also going to be a B, zero, one Bs. We find that, so we hold on to that. And now the last part of the string we're looking at, we have a C and it's not a BC. So we just match on the AB. Whereas the DFA will see the A and then the B will match, but then it sees the BC, a longer thing will match, so it gives up that first part to match the longer string. So that's handled a little bit differently. Um, and as far as recon goes, like that's a big assumption the, that you actually have the ability to know what the system's expressions are and you'd be able to give it strings and to be able to know what it's matching. So sometimes you can't always do that recon. Um, another thing you can do is if you uh, can give it a string and you kind of know what the expression is, you can time it and if it takes the same amount of time for a lot of different strings, then you're probably dealing with the DFA. If it's uh, inconsistent on the time, it takes longer for some uh, strings than others, it's either an NFA or it's a hybrid. Um, so we'll kind of do some comparisons between the engines still on how they kind of work on the back end. And I'll, I'll start with like the kind of the, the lies to simplify things and then I'll kind of like go farther under the hood as, as we go. Um, so the first kind of like simplified um, version of how it, it works, I look at like kind of a labyrinth and how an engine would do pathfinding. Um, and this is going to be the NFA example. So it'll kind of like go down, like say the algorithm is just to follow one side of the, the maze and if it hits a dead end, kind of backtrack and go take another path. 
Uh, so this is kind of what that would look like. You see it backtracks at that dead end, comes, finds another backtracks, and that's just kind of how that, that goes. And depending on how the maze looks, like it, you don't know exactly how long it'll take to get through depending on how the dead ends are. Whereas with the DFA, it kind of in parallel just goes through all the options and picks the longest one that works. So it's going to be deterministic how fast it goes, um, and then you, you get the, the, longest, the longest match. Uh, the problem is you're doing all that at once, so um, it takes more memory. So part two, um, with say this is our example regular expression um, at the top, kind of in the blue, and at the bottom, I kind of wondering. Yeah, actually, uh, the contrast is not as terrible as I think. At least on my monitor here, but red on red, that was kind of stupid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that would be the, the red is like the search string. Um, so with uh, the NFA engine, it starts at it, it takes a look at the expression and sees how that's matching with the string. So it, it's going okay, um, zero or more L's. No, that, that that A doesn't satisfy the P. No, no. There we go. That matches. So then we go on to the next uh, part. No, that that L doesn't match because we're still looking for more L's, right? And um, so that I was not an L. So we go to the next part of the expression. Is that a T? No. Is that a C? No. Uh, is that an I? Yes. So then um, we, we can go to the next uh, part there and just keep on looking. Is that a T? No. Is that a C? Yes. Is that an A? Yes. And we can qualify that and keep going. That's a T. Just keep going, you know. And then this is where we start to fail. So is it a T? No. Is it a C? No. It's an I? No. And then we're done. And that's the match. Um, so the difference with, uh, well, I'll get into how the, the DFA does it a little bit later. Um, but also, we can kind of like flow chart that out um, into a state diagram, and this is kind of what it looks like, and it's kind of convoluted and messy. Um, but this is what an actual state di diagram would be for this specific example back here. So we start at like nothing, and we kind of at the bottom here we go, is this an L? But it doesn't have to be because we can kind of go back. And um, this is where we kind of like diverge our three uh, different patterns in our alternation list. So specifically, what I meant by that is like, well, back. There we go. Um, we have our, our T group, our CA group, and our I group. Uh, so going back there, we have like uh, at the, the bottom there the T um, right there. We have our CA, and then we have our I. You know, and then in green is like kind of our we solved it state. It matches state. And if you really wanted to pop the hood, there's there's a way that you can actually get uh, Perl to tell you exactly how it's compiling a regular expression. So again, this is our expression at the top. And this is kind of the, the programming language side of it. This is how it's being compiled. Um, and I say it's, uh, at the beginning I said it's non-Turing complete because you can't actually have like an infinite loop to the best of my knowledge, but in theory you shouldn't be able to have an infinite loop. You can have like an iteration that goes over and over and over and over and backtracks and over and over, but you shouldn't ever really have an infinite loop. So in, in other words, it should actually finish, which is the F and the, the NFA and DFA. It's a finite automata. Um, and then this is just more of that same expression. So DFA, it's a little bit different. And this is like even like more of a lie of how it works. It really doesn't work this way, but it's more uh, string uh, based. So it, it looks at the string and says, does it match this part of the expression? And it kind of follows the string instead of the, the expression itself. And this is kind of more of what a DFA state diagram would look like. And it has multiple ways that it can match, and it picks the longest match. Whereas like a, a NFA would pick the, the first one and it's done when it picks the first one. And this is a more accurate way, like if you're actually writing a, um, an engine, a DFA engine in a programming language, uh, it's, it's kind of like you're going to be setting up an array. It's like a state, uh, a state diagram and you're going to like go through the states. Uh, it's a lot easier to comprehend than how an NFA engine would work. Um, so and this is, again, this state diagram, it's not arbitrary. This is still following the same example with like the application string and that regex. So like you start at state zero um, up here and uh, you would, in state zero you're looking for, you know, does it have an L, T, C, I, or A? And uh, you'd eventually get to uh, that, that L. And when you do, that just tells you now you go to the state that's listed in this diagram, which is one. So now we'd be on state one. And then we'd like look for any of those letters and whatever letter it is, it instructs you which state, three, you know, two, three, or four. Like if you had a C, it would instruct you to go to state three. And eventually you might get like a, a character that's not there, which would mean you fail, or you would um, just, you'd match um, eventually. Uh, and that's important to look at uh, DFA in that kind of a context because 
that gives you an idea of how you can DOS the memory. Uh, being that it's a table in memory, what ways can you make that table grow? Um, one way is to have uh, more of those, uh, you know, different kinds of patterns you're looking for uh, would make it grow out, or you can just have a lot more states. Um, and I've kind of learned that the states um, are the easiest way to attack it in practice. In theory, uh, you either should work, but in practice, having more states is the way to do it. So now let's talk about abusing DFAs, and we'll, we'll talk about abusing NFAs after this, which is more complicated. But thinking of the labyrinth, this is the way I'd abuse it, right? You, you give it multiple paths so you expand that memory out um, because it's, it has to traverse all of them all at the same time. So that's what I explained there. And that's kind of an example. That's a POC. That's uh, an expression that not even like give it, getting to the point of giving it a string to search, just the fact that it has to load that um, expression up as a state table, that would consume a lot of memory right there, that expression. It's because, to break it down, in this first set of parentheses there, we're looking for 0 to 75 A's, and then we group that, and then we're looking for 0 to 75 of that, and that's grouped, and we're looking for 0 to 75 of that. Um, so it multiplies out pretty badly. Now we'll talk about abusing NFAs. I'm going to check the time real quick here. Just don't want to. Yeah, cool. I'm um, going pretty fast. So uh, this is another labyrinth. Uh, one important thing is there is no way to solve it. The, the, you see like uh, a startup here, but there is no solution. And keep in mind, it, it tries to like go every uh, path it can to try to find uh, the the solution. But if it doesn't, it kind of backtracks and tries another way, and backtracks and tries another way. So if you gave it a way out, once it got out, it'd be done. It would it'd be matched. So you just make it try every single possible thing, and in the end, it doesn't even match. But that takes a lot of time, and that's the way to abuse an NFA. Um, so yeah, the way to kind of. Uh, conclude that is it tries everything until it finds a match, dot, dot, dot. So I don't know about the contrast here, but OWASP, they have a, a, a pretty easy to understand example of how that should work. You have an expression that um, has to start with an, uh, an A, like one or more A's, and then the grouping one or more of that, and you end anchor it, because then you can like give a different character to make it fail. And that's kind of what they do. They, their example is, say like you had four A's and an X, that gives it 16 possible paths that it would have to take to, to find out that it's not matching. But if you just gave it a little bit more A's like that example there, that's, you know, 65,000-ish different paths it has to take, which takes so much longer. Um, but kind of unfortunately, uh, that's the naive uh, assumption that the regex is not going to do any, or the engine that you're using is not going to do any kind of little bit of optimizing. So like, Optimization, like without it, you're thinking I'm going to flood the world, but in reality, like it's it's really getting optimized to that right there. Uh, so, kind of a metaphor for that for any people that are hardcore C people uh, with compilers, you know, they do some optimizations as well. Uh, this is even if you don't know C, this is really kind of child's play. Like this is saying uh, the number we get if we're uh, actually we're not even taking an input. We're just saying hey, if five is greater than zero print true, otherwise print false. Like that's pretty simple. Um, so when we actually compile it and look at it in a debugger, uh, it's not actually doing a whole lot. Um, we're just making, making a call here after we set up a stack frame. Um, and you know, we already have this true uh, populated in, in our um, register there. And if we look at the hex of the program itself, we have true but no false. What that's really meaning is it's just straight going to the printf. It's just printing true because the compiler knows that in this case back here, there is never a situation for this code that false will ever be true. It already knows that. So why even compile that? Why even make code for that? So we have to trick the optimization and only just a little bit, just simply. So we make that variable. Um, so we have a variable that's equal to five, and then we test to see if that variable is greater than zero. And that's all we have to do to make the compiler like not be able to understand where that's going. So when we do that simple modification, if we were to look at that in a debugger, we actually see that it's moving five into an area, and it is comparing right there with zero. And we do have some conditional instructions until we actually get to the call to printf. Um, and then if you go into memory, you actually see that it has both the uh, true and false state. So that's what we need to do for regex. Like I know it's kind of like a tangent uh, kind of analogy, but uh, we can kind of do that same thing with regular expressions. So in the OWASP example, they were using a plus. 
So what's kind of similar to a plus, well, we can use the curly braces, the, the range thing. So we can say, um, I should be done with memes now, but this is our range. It's like almost like one or more, right? Uh, so to kind of format that OWASP example um, in that way to re replace all the pluses with one to more than 9,000, uh, we have that there and then grouped and then we have that one to nine, more than 9,000 again and end anchored. And then I will zoom into this, but this is me benchmarking it. So I, I didn't do A, X, I did A, B with uh, that expression there. And I timed it, uh, just user bin time. And in that first one there, we have like almost a second. And you'll notice I'm increasingly adding an A each time I test the timing for it, right? So I go back over here to the actual timings. One second, two seconds, four seconds, almost 10 seconds, 18 seconds. Like you can kind of see what's happening here after we add one more e, uh, A each time. It doubles. And then you see these two down here that it like took, you know, 0 0.02 seconds. What that really was was the original OWASP example. We see that it is actually getting optimized and that it doesn't take a long time. So you still do have to trick it. And you might be thinking there's not a lot of times that I have control over the expression itself because this is considering you do have control and you do get to make a bad expression. It does happen rarely though. Like one kind of really naive uh, but still it's happened uh, scenario is um, you have uh, a server side uh, validation for someone trying to uh, sign up for an account on a website. Uh, client side you just DOS yourself. But uh, so server side you want to, when you're registering your username and password, it wants to make sure that your username and password are not the same. Uh, you should never use regular expressions to check that, but say you did. Well, for the username you make a really poor regular expression and for the password you have a string that DOSes it and now you're DOSing that on the server. So yeah, that was a rundown of the benchmarks and I get a little bit gnarly, more gnarly about that later on. So now I'll talk about the automations, um, the theory about what goes into it, and I'll uh, show some cool and funny examples of that, and then I'll do a demo of uh, the script that I wrote. So for DFAs, actually it's kind of funny because DFAs haven't gotten that much attention, but um, I, I mean as far as I've researched, but it's actually, it was kind of the easiest to, to, to benchmark, and that's really all you can do. You can only benchmark it. You can't really like make something worse for an expression. The expression already is like either good or it's bad. So if you're DOSing it, you just kind of have to be aware of what a bad expression is and for a typical kind of like DOS or DDoS situation, instead of like just loading a web page a lot, you, you just do a post to that uh, expression with the string that's arbitrary. The string doesn't matter, but now you're just making it load that state table and consume memory. So what I did to benchmark it is I used the RE2 um, module. I did it with Perl. And I just kind of slowly starved it of resources. So like I would load the state table and then I'd use the module again, but like I'd tell it to use a certain, like a little bit more memory and then I would, you know, try to get in a little bit more memory and eventually I'm going to get like some errors saying it ran out of memory, you know, and then I just capture that and uh, record it. And this is, uh, yeah, so that's all for DFAs. I'm like right into NFAs now. So uh, for NFAs it's more complicated. The string matters. So how do you like automate that? How do you say like look at expressions and know well this one's not going to perform well when you don't know what string to test it with? You can't just give it an arbitrary string and time that. So you kind of have to like some way automatically generate a string that's bad and in my case also generate a, a string that's good too because then I can not only compare like is a string just generally bad for any strings or is it like an expression that might be okay given your environment, but somebody can still abuse it. Um, and I keep track of all of that. Um, and one way to think about craft, crafting a really bad string is to, I call it a long circuit attack, because when you're thinking about programming languages, say you had a bunch of um, ORs in a conditional, like if A or B or C or D and on, um, if your variable had A, it's not going to evaluate anything after that. It's like it has A and it stops. So if you long circuit it, you um, have a string that's like A, well it's, uh, it has everything like A, B, C, but then the last one is, is, is not. Um, so it fails at that part. Um, another thing is if I see a quantifier, um, my string is going to pick as many as possible. If it's, you know, A plus, I'm going to put a bunch of A's. If it's A 1 to 15, I'm going to pick 15 A's. And for any alternations that I see, I pick the last alternative. So it has to look at all of them before it gets to that. So here's an example. Um, this is the expression. 
uh, either an AB or a CD or a YZ, anywhere from one to 20 of them, and then a G. So a simple example that would match, and this is like it matched the quickest, um, there's an AB, satisfied, and that was one of them, and there happens to be a G. We're done, we match. Um, an example of what would take a lot longer is, there's a YZ, but you know, you have to look at the AB, no, CD, no, YZ, yes, okay, there's a YZ. Is the next one a G? No, okay. Well, is it an AB, is it a CD, is it YZ? So we do that 20 times, and then eventually, A. And we picked A because it's not G. So it still has to look through everything and backtrack, everything and backtrack, and that's the longest it would take to solve that one. And as far as the complication to automating this, um, say our expression ended with a, a G and then the star, which means zero um, or more. Well, zero is an option. So again, being that I have to negate that last lexeme, uh, this, this YZ, 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 A would still match because I don't need to have a G at that point, so it still works. So I have to still find a way to negate the last lexeme that isn't optional. So anything star, any uh, zero to whatever number quantifiers, um, I, I can't use those, or even the question mark one. So I made a script called, uh, uh, like, was it benchrexes.pl, uh, and I'll show you some examples of actual output it gives for arbitrary strings. And then I'll just show you it working, but I thought it'd be cool to look at some examples to see what kind of tricks it does for it. So the, the um, expression at the top is high. That's the regular expression. Um, my script would output ha, like it matches the first part and it negates the, the last part. And that's kind of how that works. I started simple like that. So say, being that we got ha from here, let's use ha as the expression and see what it does with that. I say ha, then it does h1. It still negates it. Say I did one to 15 a's and then an h and then a, then a bang. Well, then it's like, the, you know, again, the most amount of a quantifier, so it's 15 a's and then an h and then not a bang, it's an A. So it still fails but makes it have to do everything possible. Again, like a big long alternation and of uh, a lot of alternatives, then a D and then a 1. So it picks the last alternation, the YZ, it does a D but not a 1. If I do any amount of H's, like where one or more H's and then an I, a lot of H's and then an A. Um, this, is, this one, okay, yeah, so it's, uh, it has to have an X and then um, one or more, uh, or one to ten A's, and then that one to ten times, but it picks just a one because it can't have any A's. This one's more interesting. Uh, it's kind of the same thing, but we're just adding an end anchor to the, the end of that. So it starts with the X, it does a whole bunch of A's, so it can end with the one, so it has to do a lot of backtracking to see, so it, has to, it takes the most time to evaluate, no, it doesn't match. So this is the script I was talking about. What you do is you give it a text file with a bunch of regular expressions. It goes through them all. It, it does the DFA memory testing. It generates the, the good and evil strings. It tests to see how long it takes to run each one. And then you can even have it output a CSV file so then in a spreadsheet uh, software you can sort them by best to worst or whatever. Um, and for my research, just to go through a lot of lists of uh, expressions, I thought it'd be fun to look at, you know, say the emerging threats IDS rule set and also reg regexlib.com. And that was like <laughs> the best for debugging my, uh, my, my script because there were some like really, really strange and terrible expressions on there that just broke my script. And some of them still do because like I don't actually try to validate whether it's a real um, valid expression. So I would say like to be honest that the script is still a little bit buggy but it still works pretty well. And I also mentioned what I tested it on because um, I'm not going to say like this expression universally takes 1.5 seconds. Well, it does on this machine, but uh, still to give you an idea. So I'll look at some examples uh, of, of real stuff in the wild. Uh, this is the most complete URL validator. Uh, if you don't need the most complete URL validator, don't do that. Um, if you're using a DFA, that would take 150 megs each shot you use that expression. This one's not so bad, but I was just throwing an example in for something that's not so bad. Um, this is supposed to validate long uh, Windows file names, and it uses like, you know, less than a meg of memory. Um, this is probably the worst time based or DFA based attack um, from regexlib. Um, 
it's supposed, it, I don't even know why I'd use an expression like this, but it's supposed to match um, any valid human name, like people's names, like Mr. whatever, you know. Um, this expression takes more than four seconds each time um, you use it with, a, with an evil string. And now I get into some of the IDS rules. Uh, this one's not so bad memory wise, um, but I'm just showing it here. Um, this one's really bad um, time wise. Because, and um, the, the actual uh, rule is uh, emerging threats, ActiveX, image shack, toolbar, remote code execution. Um, for the evil string that my script generates, it takes 1.6 seconds to evaluate. And of course, your like beefy IDS machine is going to go a little bit quicker than that. But the way to think of it is if it takes longer for your IDS to evaluate this uh, exp uh, string or packet in this case than it takes for me to send the packet, you got a problem. Oh, and, and by the way, um, last year at DEF CON I did a um, presentation on various things, but one of them um, I released a script called 8ball that um, will attempt to trigger every single IDS uh, rule um, on an IDS. You feed it um, an IDS rule set, it kind of deconstructs all the rules and it makes a packet for each and then you just send it off to a target. Um, and these IDS rules have regex in it. So this 8ball script, um, I added a speedball option. So now you can tell it to do redos for all of these packets as well. And in this case, it wouldn't actually trigger all the IDS rules. It would actually make the IDS take as long as possible, but they all fail to match too, so you wouldn't even see alerts in theory. And this, just to show an example, because I'm talking about the benchmarks, but if you want to see what a, a string looks like with this tool for a real expression, that's what it generates. And it's cool. That, that's like kind of the point of automating, because I, I read the OWASP page and I'm like, yeah, yeah, obviously, like that makes sense. But I, I don't think I would ever really look at this expression and think, yeah, this is a terrible expression. This would take a while to evaluate with some string I haven't thought of yet. But when you automate it, I get something like this that still doesn't look that crazy, but it still takes a while. Yeah. And then um, looking at it in a DFA context, this is where I like give examples of uh, the worst I can possibly throw at it. Because like, yeah, 150 megs, that doesn't sound that bad or, um, it, or I mean this, this actually I think uh, that other one that was really bad, just want to see. No, yeah, that's, that's really, I, wow. Like that's kind of funny. Like when I try to, to be the worst I possibly can, that's about as good as I can do. So this one must be really bad. Because this is me trying to do like a really a simple like bad expression by building up a big state table and I barely get like 10 megabytes more. But this is the worst I can do uh, myself. And then for time ones, I mean, man, forget about it. Like to do really, really bad with that, you, I, I give a few examples but um, I start with uh, this kind of expression and, and this is the same expression I'm going to use every time um, but I use different strings. So like this, this, String with 40 A's and a B, that would like, like take two days. And I actually tested that. That took me two days, right? Um, and then in theory, like, and it is really like times two. It's not like it doesn't kind of trickle off. So 54 A's would take like a lifetime, and 81 A's would take the existence of the universe based on like 13, 14 billion years. Um, it will finish. It's not an infinite loop. It will finish. But, uh, you know, that doesn't mean much if it's going to take that long. And Kind of a sidetrack, and I'm almost done. I'm going to show the, like the, the demo real quick, and that's not too long. But I thought this was funny. I, I look at an expression like this up here, and I'm not immediately thinking what this is looking for. But this is my non-DOS engine and my my DOS engine, and these are the strings that it makes for it. And I just think that's kind of cool, you know, because I don't look at that expression and think, yeah, Viagra. But this is from regex lib, and there is a red, regular expression that was meaning to look for Viagra, probably for spam, you know. But that's kind of cool too. Automation's funny. And then um, more recently, I didn't dig into this one a lot, but Yara too. Um, Yara, you can use regular expressions in that. And um, it, and again, I kind of, so the funny thing is I, I wanted to see, okay, is this an NFA or a DFA? So I had to use my own little tricks to try to um, see what that was. And it turns out it's definitely not a DFA because it's not um, deterministic time-wise. But it doesn't seem to be a pure NFA either because it's not like it doubles for every A I add. It seems like it is hybrid, but it definitely has some NFA elements based on the exponential increase um, in the strings that I give to it. So um, an actual test that I did was uh, like a 100 byte file that it's checking for malware. This is like the Yara thing. Um, so up here is the rule that I'm using. And I have a file with 99 A's and a B. And that took me like 13 hours to. Um, 
see whether that was malware based on that um, definition. So like that's still kind of bad. But again, that's like harder to, atta to attack because I don't know of anybody that's going to be using um, a definition like that. You know, this is just me trying to do it badly. And really, out of a lot of the definitions I've seen, most people don't even use expressions anyway. They just use strings or hex matches and build complex uh, logic or uh, the, the condition section here. And you know, Pixar didn't happen. This is a screenshot. So um, it's me timing it, running Viara on uh, my rule file with that text file, the dos.txt. Um, this is the 13 um, hours, 19 minutes. I'm showing the output of uh, an expression that's similar um, and then the A's and the B and then I'm showing, you know, hey, it's 100 bytes down there. And yeah, so demo time. It's a good time for me to take a drink again because it is testing the timing of this and it does have timeout so it's not just going to go crazy and take like, you know, your lifetime. So you can give it, by default it, it times out at like 30 seconds. So if you are getting expressions that time out, you can actually define the timeout as longer if you want um, to really explore that. But by default it times out so you don't go crazy with this. And you see I'm running uh, the, the tool against a text file called PCRE simple dot text and then I, oh, I want a CSV. That text file is back here. I'm giving it just nine expressions. Um, some that look kind of familiar as bad ones. Some not. The Viagra one and I also have the, the bad uh, IDS one and the bad um, regex lib one. And it has out, it has finished. So I'm going to open it up. It's tab delimited and I know that's kind of weird, not comma delimited, but um, it was easier because a lot of expressions have tabs in them and I have the expression output in it as well. So like I just, uh, yeah, that would be annoying without using a really, really good module for CSVs. So those are all the expressions. We get to see how long they take. This one is clearly the worst of those, uh, 11 seconds. Um, but you also see the four and a half second one and the one and a half second one. Um, so that's the DOS time, but I also time how good it works on uh, a good expression. So that bad expression here, the one to eight, one to eight thing with the anchor, uh, normally it can take like a split second, but it could take up to 11. So that's the interesting thing. It's not always bad. And I give a delta, like the, the difference between the good and the bad. And then I give the memory for assuming it was a DFA. So clearly this one is probably the worst down here. And that was the one that builds up our, our state table DOS. Um, so that's all I'm good to know, like, which ones are the worst for uh, time or memory, but it would still be interesting to know five minutes, yeah, I'm almost done. Um, it'd be interesting to know uh, what the good and evil strings are as well, because that didn't tell us. So I gave an option for that. It's just dash dash strings, and it doesn't actually measure the time, so you just get it instantly. Uh, so if I go up here, you actually can get the feedback right away. Um, so a dot plus r g h, it's like arg, you know, uh, for the dos string, and then simple string, it's just arg. Um, some of them aren't really that dosable, like this one here. The dos string is a. That's not really gonna take any time, and the simple string is b, because um, it's a because it's negating the whole thing. Um, a bad one uh, for the DFA would be this, but you, the, the dos and the simple string is more for the, the NFA, and. Uh, yeah, you get your Viagra there, you get the one that you saw on the deck here, and then you get this strange one down here from the regex lib. So that's the demo, pretty quick, and it's on my GitHub, which again, if you want that uh, address, it's the guy down here. And it's over. <laughs> Thank you.